Hi, I'm Flora Salim. I'm a professor and also Cisco Chair of Digital Transport and AI at the University of New South Wales in Sydney. And also, I'm a co-leader of the Mobility Focus Area with Professor Sarah Pink at Monash University. So why is mobility important to examine when we talk about automated decision-making systems? Well, mobility is fundamental to life. There are always materials in movement, there are always other species in movement, there are always humans in movement, there are always technologies in movement. And all of these things are continually moving and as things move, they reconfigure, they reshape the environments in which we live. So of course mobility is one of the most important things that scholars can focus on. We all are social beings and we actually move around our lives. So a lot of things, a lot of decision making systems in our cities in buildings, in, in the way we work, is actually dependent on very much about where we are, where we're going, and our day-to-day -day routines. Mobility isn't also just about people. Mobility involves other species. What about the mobility of animals? What about the mobilities that are part of our environment, the flows of air, the flows of energy? All of those things which are fundamental to keeping people alive. And what do automated technologies have to do with those? Well, that opens up a whole host of, of questions. Not just questions about what the technology is going to do, but it also opens up questions about inclusivity. It opens up questions about human safety, it opens up questions about privacy. Therefore, investigation about mobility behavior and the methodology to actually understand including both the social ethnography aspect of it to the technical data science way of understanding and quantifying movement can actually help us to understand not only movement behavior but also, for example, demand for services, demand for resources. What we really need to ask ourselves is how people want to move. We also need to understand how do people want to feel when we move and how do not just those automated technologies that might move us, but also how do those automated technologies that might move with us, that we take with us, enable us to feel right? So what are the wearables that are going to form part of that in the future? And understanding these patterns will help key decision makers in our city to actually optimize the way the buildings operate trains and uh, uh, public transports operate or even to optimize energy operations because if we know where people are where they will actually use the energy that's where we need to actually optimize and allocate more resources we need to also think about that challenge around environmental sustainability when we consider our future automated mobilities how can we best think about the future energy sources, how do we think about renewable energy and other sources which will actually enable us to not further damage the environment when we try to keep ourselves safe. So how do we actually go about designing the right technologies which are ethical, which are safe and they're actually designed to support the way that we want to live in the future. There's so much concern, so much critique about the problems that automated technologies are going to cause. We also need to pay a lot more attention to what could go right. Because if we do develop and design these technologies in such ways that they support future human life in a way that encourages inclusivity, encourages safety, encourages care, then they can really benefit our future lives. So in the next year, I'd like to see mobility researchers in the Centre for Automated Decision Making Society really thinking about how we can do some new research around mobilities and automation. What are the new questions we need to ask? How do we move on from those questions that have always been asked? And how do we work across our disciplines to say something new? Because there are some important new things that need to be said. We don't even know exactly what they're going to be yet, but that is the excitement of discovery.